Thank you for attending my session presented today by the Learning Revolution, the Emergency Home Learning Summit. Having the pleasure of recently attended two sessions, a couple of themes resonated with me because they segue nicely into what I'll be talking about today. And you came to my session to hear about mindfulness practices using contemporary children's literature. One theme emerged from librarian Andrea Trudeau's session on leading from the heart in a school library because she acknowledges the importance of the power of a moment and references a book by the same name. And this indeed is the basic ingredient of mindfulness. It's the present moment. And another powerful statement by Judy Arnell, certified Canadian family life educator, underpins her talk with a theme about teachers and schools no longer being the gatekeepers of education and information, emphasizing the world is our classroom indeed. With the world connected, most of us to the internet, in particular social media, we're right now almost moment by moment experiencing some level of stress or anxiety, more likely about the virus, and we have climate challenges, political strife, and educational inequality. And don't forget technology stress, which is there, especially with meetings and video conferencing like Zoom. And the stress of being home, sometimes not talked about. Homes can even be more stressful than ever right now. Something that is not a dinner conversation is the stress levels that are at epidemic levels in high schools and colleges. We know this, and we can be mindful of what programs and resources we can access to help ourselves, our children, and our students to thoughtfully, with kindness and intention, bring down stress levels because stress is having dire consequences impacting our mental health and well being. The interest in contemporary mindfulness is relatively new in education but its roots are over 2,500 years old and reach deep into Buddhism. Mainstream mindfulness programs and practices are becoming almost the norm in schools and some purely as mindfulness programs and more as SEL, social emotional learning programs. Home learning needs to embrace this area with rigorous attention and commitment to social and emotional well-being. Three programs I'm mentioning today have university connections and are mostly written for elementary schools. All three have mindfulness components embedded in the curriculums. The first is Mark Brackett's Ruler Program at Yale University Center for Emotional Intelligence. This is for schools only for purchase. The Kindness Curriculum from the University of Wisconsin-Madison by Dr. Richie Davidson is available for schools and home learning at no cost through his website. And the Mind Up curriculum, which is the Goldie Hawn Foundation associated with Columbia University for Schools, also with a home learning component, and this can be found on Amazon for purchase. As with any novel program, the implementation and evaluation should address fidelity, addressing the program being delivered exactly as written and prescribed. Now, in each book and complementary resource I'm presenting today, think of mindfulness practices in terms of supporting student agency in acquiring more awareness in regulating emotions and behavior. The overarching goal is cultivating self-awareness and self-regulation skills which in turn support emotional health and well-being. The authentic practices are foundations for influencing and fostering academic behaviors. We want to increase curiosity, attention, and concentration. We want to decrease reactivity and optimize pausing, reflecting, and responding appropriately. The benefits of mindfulness are decreasing stress, decreasing anxiety, increasing focus, attention, and concentration, and cultivating practices that positively affect self-regulation of behavior and emotion. 
I might have violated the PowerPoint rules for too much text, but here goes. With good intention, I wrote a rich description about the foundational concepts of mindfulness used in contemporary children's literature because there isn't. And it's important to look for these key things when evaluating children's mindfulness literature. So if you can, maybe take a screenshot here or a photo to reflect on this. Okay, the mindfulness stories, like most children's literature, are written in the first person. The main character has something that's happening in their life or environment. Or the character can be investigating or trying to solve something that's happening and that is something of high interest. The new information introduced is often didactic, directly providing instruction on mindfulness breathing and related practices. The mindfulness story theme is generally about a problem to be so solved by learning more mindful practices and learning to cultivate a variety of these practices. The characters in the books are culturally diverse and include children in the special needs population in the illustrations. The illustrations also include realistic children and scenes drawn or painted using ink or watercolors, animal illustrations using the same mediums and sometimes even actual photos of children situationally positioned learning about self-awareness, self-management, and in context are engaging in mindfulness practices usually independently. Kindness, gratitude, and compassion scenarios can be introduced and included, but secondary to the primary theme. Children's mindfulness literature archetypically includes basic mindfulness practices presented in various story formats. Typically with the characters engaging in learning mindfulness practices like mindful breathing, mindful noticing, using the senses, somatic awareness, meaning practices like body scans, progressive muscle relaxation and silent meditative practices with eyes opened or closed, and characteristically fiction, including imagination with fictitious characters, and again, the didactic instruction directly teaching mindfulness concepts and practices. The overarching goal, again, is to intentionally cultivate self-awareness, self-regulation, to support metacognitive skill sets, to foster engagement in somatic and sensory practices, creating opportunities for present moment focus and attention, deepen and increase self-compassion, kindness, gratitude, and relationality of the self to others in the world, and to provide opportunities for developing emotional intelligence. In each book and resource, think of it this way. The mindfulness practices provide students with powerful agency in regulating their emotions and behavior. The most widely recognized and accepted definition of mindfulness is by John Kabat-Zinn, father of contemporary mindfulness and founder of MBSR, which is the mindfulness-based stress reduction. And MBSR is widely recognized science-based research in mindfulness stress reduction at the University of Massachusetts. And I'm happy to say I've completed the MBSR course at Yale University. Last December, I was in New York City at John Kabat-Zinn's and Rhonda McGee's Omega event in Manhattan, the power of mindfulness in a time of upheaval brings together mindfulness and social justice was their topic. And both John and Rhonda have such a peaceful physical presence and they had a unique quieting and calming effect on the audience, intentionally and purposefully focused on the moment. And there were a lot of moments, something that I never quite experienced before in a conference. So both represented the importance of the moment-to-moment -moment awareness, that non-doing. Most of us have difficulty with just being. The images on this page reflect the symbolizing thoughts that arise in the mind, how we, how we think all the time, between 50 and 70,000 thoughts a day, and students are a little lower, between, I think, 30 and 40,000 and learning how to surf the importance of not getting caught up in thoughts and becoming aware of some thoughts we think can be wrong. 
the mindfulness piece is the importance of living in the present moment and not in the past or the future. This definition is most widely cited in a forward or an afterward or even in a dedication page in children's mindfulness literature. And the definition or parts of the definition or even a similar definition using specific words like breathing, breath, awareness, presence, calm, moments, thoughts, clarity, mind, body, senses. These are always woven somewhere into the storyline of each book. And the two practices most well known are mindful breathing. And these also are the well known basics of mindfulness in most of the books currently in children's literature. There are more books recently that involve mindful movement. I'm happy to say and introduce those to you. Some even with yoga like movements and stretches and these practices are often acted out by the characters in the story. Dr. Chris Willard, author of Alpha Breaths, is a psychologist and educational consultant based in Boston, specializing in mindfulness. In Alpha Breaths, children will learn both their ABCs and the basics of mindfulness through playful breathing exercises. Each letter of the alphabet teaches a simple mindfulness practice to help kids gain confidence, manage stress and frustration, practice kindness and gratitude. And also in the alphabet areas, there is a lot of mindful movement. In addition to the mindful video that you just saw, there is a PDF available where you can download all those letters of the alphabet and then make your own personalized card deck. Now moving on to the Moody Cow. Well, the Moody Cow, author Carrie Lee McLean has been leading family meditative art workshops of all kinds at meditation centers in Europe Australia and North America. Now in this book, the story is about Peter, who's a cow, who wakes up in a bad mood. He loses his temper and gets hurt on his bike and a lot of other things happen and he gets in trouble. Now toward the end of the book, grandfather comes to the rescue with a glitter jar and introduces it to Peter and it shows him exercises for calming meditation and helping him regulate his body and emotions. The book at the end includes a recipe for making the glitter jar. Dr. Chris Willard from Alpha Breaths, the last book, had two quotes about a glitter jar. This is the first. A glitter jar is one of the most powerful visual metaphors for that connection. It illustrates how mindfulness, the cultivation of stillness, in the face of swirling chaos of life affect us, affects us. A finished glitter jar can serve as a visual timer for practices such as breathing practices. For example, you can say, shake the jar and let's do some mindful breathing until the glitter settles. My father put the lid on the jar and shook it up real good. This jar is like your mind right now, he said. Angry thoughts bouncing around all over the place. Whitney Stewart, award-winning author of fiction and nonfiction books for kids, has traveled to Tibet, Nepal, and India, and teaches mindfulness at Tulane University to children and teens. A review from the School Library Journal puts it this way. She has great resources for students looking to incorporate mindfulness into, into their daily lives. The book presents mindfulness as a means of helping young people manage emotion, stress, anxiety, and concentration. 
mindfulness, and self-care strategies, which are referred to as Mindful Me Practices, make up most of the book's content. This is a chapter book. The chapters are divided into various contexts for mindfulness, such as emotions, thoughts, actions, and how to be mindful in and out of one's home. Now, this book features step-by-step -step directions, which include meditation, breathing exercises, and journal prompts, and also movement exercises. This is important. It's a practical toolkit for processing emotions through mindfulness techniques, an excellent purchase for schools, including, I'm going to say, homeschoolers and home learning, an excellent purchase incorporating mindfulness into the curriculum. And this is a preview of her card deck. She has a card deck, a chapter book, and an activity book. I love her card deck and I will show you a couple of things at the end about Whitney Stewart's fantastic card deck. Elena Snell is a therapist and certified MBSR trainer and runs the Academy for Mindful Teaching in the Netherlands. Her book, Sitting Like a Frog, is one of my favorites, including numerous mindfulness practices and breathing, movement, and she adds in a multimodal um, experience. She also includes a new iPhone app. It's for purchase called Sitting Still for Teens Who Are Experiencing Stress. It's great because it has a guided meditations and journaling. Here's a little sample of the Sitting Like a Frog. Exercise is inspired from Sitting Still Like a Frog. A frog is a remarkable creature. It's capable of leaps, and it is also capable of sitting still. As it sits still, it's aware of everything around it, and yet doesn't react to it. The frog sits still and breathes. As it breathes, its tummy rises and falls. In this exercise, let's pretend we are frogs in a pond with beautiful lily pads. Breathe and Be by Kate Coombs. She's an editor and an educator in Los Angeles. And she's taught reading and college writing classes. And she is a reading specialist as well. Now her book, Breathe and Be, is a book of mindfulness poems. And the poems are Tanka Haiku, which is Japanese poetry. The Tanka poems in Breathe and Be help the children learn mindfulness as they connect to the beauty of the natural world. Her mindfulness reference is made at the end of her book to John Kabat-Zinn. And Kate is also available on Zoom, and she's a reading specialist and a writing teacher. And here's her book. Breathe and Be, a book of mindfulness poems, written by Kate Coombs, illustrated by Anna Emilia Leitinen. I breathe slowly in, I breathe slowly out. My breath is a river of peace. I am here in the world, each moment I can breathe and be. It's beautiful. She has available at no cost a story hour kit based on the entire book. And it is rich in detail and engaging for your children and students. Leanne Rosen Gallagher is the creator and author of Mindful Yoga Breaks in Connecticut. She teaches yoga and mindfulness to students 
and I'm happy to say I completed her yoga and mindfulness training last year. She suggests numerous books like you've just seen in her training sessions. Now on her website, she includes Mindful Yoga Breaks. It's a card deck and it was created with the intention of teaching teachers to use these breaks in the day for calming and focus, which allows us to help our students self-regulate. And she integrates mindfulness into her yoga course and yoga breaks teaching resources. She has everything available online as a download and for purchase. She offers engaging movement practices that align nicely within intentions of mindfulness, paying attention on purpose to the body's movement, focusing on the breath. She additionally includes brain science fun facts using characters like the wise old owl and the bulldog brain. And here's the owl. And here's a bulldog. So she introduces these as the parts of the brain that are responsible for regulation of emotions and behavior. One final thought to remember in each book and resource to be mindful of the definition of mindfulness and to look for the mindfulness practices that are explicitly taught in terms of providing students with powerful agency in regulating their emotions and behavior. Complementary to some of the books are the mindfulness movement card decks. A final curation of the books reviewed today, Alpha Breaths by Chris Willard. He has a PDF of the interactive Alpha Breath cards available on his website at no cost. The Moody Cow, remember the book includes directions for making the mindfulness glitter jars. Whitney Stewart's books, Mindful Me and Her Card Decks. Belenis Snell, a mindfulness program is also available online. Many resources complement her book, audio files, mindfulness practices, PDFs at no cost, and an app sitting still. Breathe and Be by Kate Coombs. The book has a complimentary YouTube video available the, reading the entire book. There is an online mindfulness tanka Japanese poetry experience. Um, her story kit available on our website at no cost. And um, Lanny Rosen Gallagher, Mindful Yoga Breaks, her card deck was made with the intention of teaching teachers to use breaks throughout the day for calming and focusing. The final two slides will include resources and a loving kindness practice from Whitney Stewart's card deck. Resources to have in your Mindfulness SEL Home Learning Toolkit or to investigate two online mindfulness teacher training courses. I completed both of these and more, but if you're new to mindfulness for teachers, this is a good place to begin. Check out mindfulschools.org. It offers mindful SEL teacher training with references to John Kabat-Zinn's MBSR research and Mindfulness First based in Arizona. They have a 16-week MB SEL, Mindfulness-Based Social Emotional Learning Teacher Training with the philosophy based upon John Kabat-Zinn's MBSR research. Two books for parents and parent educators for reviewing children's literature and illustrations. The first is From Cover to Cover by Kathleen T. Horning and Show and Tell by Dallas Evans, exploring the fine art of children's book illustrations. These may be out of print, but I did purchase those on Amazon um, last year, so I think they still might be available. Two apps for kids to investigate, Headspace, which is now teamed up with Barbie, and Calm.com. Three curriculums I mentioned, the first being the Ruler Approach, an SEL program developed by Dr. Mark Brackett at the Yale University Center, uh, Emotional Center, which is for purchase by a school system. I'm currently participating in Mark's Permission to Feel book club, and also I'm using the OEJ Life Lab for adults, which is an app for emotional intelligence. There is currently a free online course on Coursera by Yale University for Connecticut school teachers until the end of 2020. The Kindness Curriculum for SEL Mindfulness, Dr. Richard Davidson at the Center for Healthy Minds, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, available online as a download and no at no cost, which is a research-based curriculum with engaging lessons on mindfulness and mindfulness movement. 
And something you might find noteworthy is Sir Ken Robinson, who is prominently featured in our Emergency Home Learning Conference video sessions, sat on the board of directors for the Mind Up SEL Mindfulness Curriculum, which Goldie Hawn is the foundress. The Goldie Hawn Foundation Interact Interactive Mind Up Training Resource was developed in partnership with Columbia University Center for New Media and Teacher Training and Learning. This is a rich and detailed mindfulness and SEL curriculum and is a SEL program, choice program by KSL Collaborative for Academic Social Emotional Learning. You can purchase this online and curriculum resources on Amazon. This research-based curriculum features lessons that use the latest information about the brain to dramatically improve behavior and learning for all students. I want to thank bensound.com for the intro music. Thank you again for attending my session. I hope this encourages you to explore mindfulness for yourself too, because research shows that if you are a practitioner of mindfulness, even for a few minutes a day, your children and students will benefit greatly. So I'll end with a loving kindness activity from Whitney Stewart's card deck. Today, we will be doing an activity called Loving Kindness. This activity comes from the Mindful Kids Activity Pack, created and written by Whitney Stewart and Mina Braun. The focus of this activity is to greet people with peace in your heart. Start by sitting mindfully with your spine straight and body relaxed. Hold your hand over your heart and repeat to yourself, may I be happy? May I be safe? May I be peaceful? May I be kind? Now think of a friend or family member. Repeat to yourself, may you be happy May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be kind. Now, imagine people you don't even know yet. Repeat to yourself, may you all be happy. May you all be safe. May you all be peaceful. May you all be kind. Continue your day knowing that everyone wants to be happy just like you do.